Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside and this week's nursery tour. So here we are, the very end of September. Actually, when you see this, it'll already be October crazy how time is flying. Of course, we are Creekside Nursery in Dallas, North Carolina. We are a grower retailer, meaning that we grow the plants that we sell directly to you, our customer. So we do have the Retail Garden Center here in Dallas, just west of Charlotte. And as most of you fantastic faithful followers know, we have recently launched our online store as well. So before we get into the plants that are here at the nursery, I want to go over just a few housekeeping items so that we are all on the same page. We get customers asking all the time whether you're an online customer or you're a customer coming to the garden center, um, are those two inventories the same? They are not. Yes, there is overlap between the two, but the things that you will see on our online store, sometimes we offer only online and not here at the nursery, and then of course, vice versa. So if you are coming to the nursery to shop, these are the best way uh, to know what we have that is growing, blooming, and thriving here at the nursery at this moment. That is what these nursery tours are about. If you are away from us and you want to order from Creekside Nursery, the best Best way to know what we have available is to go to gardeningwithcreekside.com. Currently, what we have on there, we have shrubs that are on there. We have Felco products. We have gardening supplies. Those types of things are on the website. As some of you may know, and some of you are uh, a little, maybe a little confused, when we launched the online website, we said that we were pre-selling those shrubs and that they would not begin to be shipped until the end of September. So guess what? It's the end of September. We are beginning to ship those shrubs that you sweet folks have ordered. You have been so amazing and so supportive and have just blown us away with your orders and we deeply and greatly appreciate that know that we are now beginning to ship orders. As soon as your order is fulfilled, you're gonna receive an email that says, hey guys, your, you know, your shrubs are on the way. It is, has a tracking number on there. You can click on it and you can see exactly when it is going to arrive at your door. So those of you that have ordered shrubs, we are going to begin shipping. They're headed your way within the next week or so. Next. Perennials and annuals will also be added to the inventory. As we are going through this and as we are you know, building this online business, we're constantly adding new products to the website. So we're actually adding some more new codes. We're restocking shrubs. We already got our perennial plants in place as far as like we know when it will be offered. We will let you know as soon as those become available um, online spring your annuals because we've had great people say hey i really want to get like i had somebody in texas the other day that said i really want vermilionaire but i can't find it well guess what we're going to have it and we're going to ship it to you and you can have it in your garden so just know retail center inventory online inventory are different there is some overlap but they are separate if you have any questions put them in the comments below and we will do our absolute best to take care of them uh Another thing, October 21st, mark your calendars. Bolton's is coming back, so Bolton's Curbside Cookery. Those fantastic friends of ours that, that do those delicious burgers and onion rings and fries, they will be back here on October 21st. So mark your calendar for that and come see us. Is that the day we're doing that? And I believe that, that is the day that we are going to be holding, um, hosting a power planter workshop. So all of you who have been interested or want to learn more about the power planter, augers that we use constantly here at Creekside, we're gonna be doing a workshop on that. So you can actually put your hands on everything. You can touch it, you can feel it, you can see exactly how it works. And we will tell you everything you need to know about Power Planter during that time. More information, of course, will be coming. Um, details will be following soon on that. Next, I mean, the big, the name of the game right now is that it is fall and it is absolute go time for planting. We were just talking as a staff and as Jerry he was like, make sure people understand this, that it, fall is a great, great, great time to plant, especially if you are in the southeast where we are, because the soil is still really, really warm. We have not, I think the lowest we have gotten here is 56. One, one morning was 56. 
the soil is still really warm, but the temperatures are slowly coming down. That means when you go and you put a shrub or a perennial or a tree in the ground, their roots are going to take off. They are going to get so established and be very, very happy going into winter, early spring, when next summer's heat hits, then they will be well established. For us in the South, we're not worried about are our winters too cold. We predominantly worry about how are these plants going to handle the summer heat. And so if you plant in the fall, you will have absolutely no problem. Remember the berm, which is just over my left shoulder. We planted that in the month of November last year phenomenal results. You will notice over here on my right shoulder, that is the signature garden. There's not a plant in there yet, but it is going to be filled by, I would say within the next month, it will be planted with the shrubs, the perennials. All of those great things will be in there. We've been purposefully holding off and to plant in the months of October and November in the signature garden. Definitely come out visit us, let us help you with your landscaping needs. Now, let's talk about some of the great plants. Like what can you plant right now? What do we have at the nursery that you can put in there? Well, we have got a ton of plants that I can't even go through all of them. We're gonna hit the highlights. Butterfly bushes, if you're looking for butterfly bushes, we have got them, whether you want some that are like the medium size, the Miss series. This is Miss Pearl. Miss Pearl obviously is gonna be a nice, beautiful white. And then that four foot range, right? So we've got Miss Pearl, we've got Miss Violet. Um, I wanted, we've got a Miss Molly. So it's all depending on what color you want. If that four to five foot range is too tall for you, then the Pugster series is gonna be what you want. Pugsters are gonna be, for us in the South, basically a three by three. Pugster Blue is one of the best performing, nice, it's really a deep purple. Um, it's a horticultural blue, but you can also see it's got tons of new growth. Like Jerry, did you show them this? Look at all this new growth and look at all those buds. Yes, it may be October, but my gosh, these butterfly bushes are still cranking out. The monarchs, as they are passing through, they're, they're what do you call it? Uh, migrating thank you that's the word they're migrating down to mexico they need these to pop in and get some food so you've got the blue you've got pugster pinker pugster pinker is one of my favorites because it's a nice really intense pretty pretty pink but look so you've got an older bloom right here and then you've got buds right there so they're continuing to produce more and more flowers as we go through a plant that i was super happy with and how it performed um, both last year and then this summer is the honeysuckle from Proven Winners. This is Sensation. And Sensation is a long blooming um, vine that grows. It is a honeysuckle. Now it is not going to be invasive like the honeysuckle that grows wild in our woods. So if, <laughs> if you're in the south or somewhere where we have, it's not even native honeysuckle, but I call it's the, what you grow wild, right? So this is going to be hardy in zones at four to nine, definitely a full sun. It will climb and it will, you can train it to go up anything because it will get 10 feet tall, two to four feet wide. It is non-invasive. It is fragrant. I found more fragrance with mine in late, late summer. Um, it'll be interesting once it's in, because we had that Arctic blast, may have gotten a little pushed back a little bit. It was fragrant later on in the season for me. And then my ones that I have on the berm are producing beautiful red berries. And it is going to be a long, long bloomer. Now, for me, in my 7B, it was an evergreen. I can't speak of that to my, my cold, cooler zones, but for us, it was an evergreen. Makes a really nice, fun addition to anything, whether you wanna do it like us, we did it on the fence, or if you wanna do it on a pergola, or you wanna do it on an arbor, that is a great option for you. It is definitely time for hydrangeas. If you're gonna be putting hydrangeas in the ground, now is the time to do it. Please don't, as a friend, Jerry may like say, Jenny, don't say that. But as a friend, as your gardening friend, the dead of summer is not the time to plant hydrangeas. The time to plant hydrangeas is the fall, winter, and extremely early spring. You're gonna have the best results for your hydrangeas because they get that root system really, really well established. So it doesn't matter what they look like right now. 
I've got some that look terrible. I don't care what they look like. I care about they have a healthy root system because come next year, they're going to flush out and be so stinking happy and give you gorgeous flowers. So whether you want an oak leaf hydrangea like a Gatsby gal that can do full sun and it will be in um, a bit of a smaller size because oak leaves can get massive. They can get like 15 to 20 feet tall and wide at maturity. Gatsby gal on the other hand, is only going to be five to six tall and tall and wide and it is hardy in zones five to nine i have mine in the full full sun you if you watch the garden tour that i did the other day i showed you mine she is already turning a lovely burgundy color the leaves turn burgundy it is beautiful if you want panicles panicles is the time to do it whether it's puffer fish we have the southern living the white wedding this has actually been pruned and look We've talked about this with your panicles. If you either prune them or clip flowers during the growing season, then they will reflush in the fall. So here you've got three buds on this plant that will give you really pretty creamy white flowers later on, right in the fall. We've got, uh, we're gonna hit up, hit up there in just a little bit. Um, hibiscus, we both have the holy here, holy grail and edge of night. These were some of the two most popular ones. We had to restock. We sold out of all the ones that we grew ourselves. Great time to get them in the ground. They are extremely cold hardy. I want to say the zone four, right? Um, very, very cold hardy. These are perennials. So they're going to die completely back to the ground when you have your first freeze. Don't worry. It's like a hosta, right? Think about it that way. Hostas die completely to the ground. You lose all and complete total foliage. Same thing with your perennial hibiscus. However, they love it hot. So it's gonna take them a minute to come back in the spring. Don't worry, I promise you did not lose your hibiscus. It just takes a while um, for them to emerge because they like to have it really, really hot. Spireas are so much fun. This is new on the market. This is the double play dolly. And dolly, let me show you the tag here. Let me flip her around. The Double Play Dolly is one of the newest ones on the market. There's your tag. It is a spirea, so spireas are deciduous. It is going to be hardy in zones three to eight, even as a 7B. I have my Double Plays in full sun and they do great. It's gonna be basically for us in the south, two feet, two and a half feet tall and wide. And it has, um, such a cute little, the color on it is nice and bright. And then those really fun, kind of that raspberry pink flower on it. It is a great addition. It is a repeat bloomer. So you're gonna have great blooms in the spring. It blooms on new growth. It means you're gonna be guaranteed to have flowers every single year. You can prune it if you need to. Very, very easy. Now, one of my favorite, if not the favorite rose from Proven Winners is I think it was their one of their original like landscape shrub roses is the atlas and the atlas rose really handles and this the irrigation was on so they're a little they're a little wet this morning um the atlas rose can handle our heat and humidity um, everything that our southern climate can throw at it and it does really really well i have one in a pot at the house no black spot um, I have not treated it. I have not been very faithful on um, fertilizing it and it is still producing and it has, it truly does have a beautiful, delicious rose fragrance to it. These will most definitely be going into the signature garden because it is such a great, great rose. It's gonna be hardy in zones of five to nine, basically three feet tall and wide. So it's gonna be a very manageable size in your garden. It is not gonna be something massive and gangly, has a nice tight upright habit to it. I would tell you if it was gonna be floppy, it is not floppy. Of course, roses do bloom on new growth, so you want to prune it every winter and you get, it is a continuous bloomer. Mine at the house produce flowers all throughout the season. So the Atlas roses, it is a great time to get them in the ground as well azaleas you cannot go wrong especially here in the south with azaleas azaleas i think are pretty iconic here in the south uh, because they are that beautiful flowering shrub 
we have these are the perfecto mundos from proven winners and then we also have encore azaleas now the perfecto mundos tend to be on the smaller side they're not going to be the really ginormous huge azaleas maybe that we kind of traditionally think of and they are repeat bloomers so they're going to bloom three times so that is the perfecto mundo double white then we have like the um, double pink they're going to be various sizes but roughly in that two to three foot size right so there's a little bit a little variation between them hardy and zones 6b to 9. cooler people i'm sorry <laughs> Maybe you don't get an azalea. You get other things that we can't have. You get lilacs. You get to enjoy beautiful lilacs. So, yeah, and your blue conifers and your wygillas do so much better. So that's the thing. I think we all the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence, right? So there's always something that we want to grow that we can't grow. Uh, gardenias. I mean, let us let the southerners have something you know um so anyway but these repeat bloomers are going to be full sun they definitely need the sun to be repeat bloomers if you have a shady garden um, then we absolutely can put azaleas in that shade area it's just not going to be these right so we always have to think about your conditions are you sun are you shade are you somewhere in between so ideas on that let's talk about some fall interest plants that you can plant in your ground right now that give you fall a fall show without a doubt you cannot go wrong with beauty berries so this oh, here this is brighter over here sorry i'm trying to find the brightest one this is pearl glam and i adore pearl glam because it has such a great habit to it. The foliage on it has a, is a dark green. The berries you cannot beat. This is not even as intense as they're gonna get. They're gonna continue to really get deeper and richer purple. What's fun is too, that you can see right here, this is typically, this is the, the flowers, the foliage that you're going to see in the spring and the summer. What happens is, is it starts at the bottom and it flowers up the stem and then those flowers turn into these berries. So all these berries that you see, those at one time were flowers. The pollinators really, really love them. Um, they are full sun. I think these are going to be hardy in zones five to eight and they're going to be about four to five feet tall and wide. They bloom on new growth, so you absolutely can prune them and keep them whatever size you want. You're gonna to wanna to prune them at the end of winter going into spring. This is a great option. Viburnums, we have got Brandywine, uh, that does not go on that one. Brandywine Viburnum, here we go. Um, these are newer ones that we planted, and then these are, this is probably like a one-year plant, this is a two-year plant. Brandy wines, as you can see right here, they are going to be deciduous, okay? But they have huge glossy leaves on them that are really big. In the spring, summer, they produce these um, flowers. These are going to be nice, pretty white flowers. And then this time of year, those flowers, it's kind of like the pearl glam, turn into berries. And they go, I think it's from pink to blue. It's either blue to pink or pink to blue. Anyway, this is a great interest for your garden. It is great for the birds because the birds love to come and eat those berries. This will be a nice big size. Brandywine is, um, here, I will let Jerry show you the tag because that has the berries on it. So this Brandywine Viburnum does have that really nice fall foliage, that fall color with the berries, and then your foliage does change as well. Hardy and zones five to nine, so very, very adaptable. Sun to part shade, five to six tall and wide. It is um, great for hedges, naturalizing rain gardens, all sorts of great areas. It does best in moist, well-drained soil. So pruning, really don't need to do it. I have never pruned mine and they are doing great. A nice presence to the garden and your foliage will have a lovely fall, um, like a burgundy-ish, mums, would you say? No, he's, ta he's talking to me. Now, okay, we're gonna stop. We're gonna hold the presses here just for a second. If you have been around me for any like hot second of a minute, you know that I, <laughs> I do enjoy flowers that have a lovely fragrance. Gardenias, summertime, cannot beat it. This time of year, 
What is my favorite shrub? What is my favorite scent? Jerry, what do I love? He olives. Oh my gosh, sweet osmanthus. They are in bloom right now. And I can go around the garden and I'm like, I can smell it. It is divine, it is delicious. Guess what we're standing beside? All right, so this sweet thing has her flowers. Now, if you're not familiar with a tea olive, a sweet olive, a sweet osmanthus, it depends on where you live in the South as to what they call it. You may go, well, that is just, that flower is just nothing. You're absolutely right. To look at it, it is not impressive. To smell it is divine. It can be 20, 30 feet away and the wind blows and you're like, oh, it is this great, like a, a cross of a orangey honeysuckle jasmine fragrance and I adore it. It blooms in the fall, winter, spring. It'll go off and on depending with the weather, but a really nice, delicious fragrance. That's all I can say. Love, adore, adore this plant. It is evergreen. It will do, um, it will get to be, you can prune it however you want. Mature size can go, they come in different, obviously different cultivars or different, you know, sizes, but roughly think of that like somewhere six to 10 feet in maturity and they're more columnar than they are wide. These make great privacy screens, but you also want to put it where you can smell it. So maybe near a porch is what we have them. Um, near a pool like they would be great at a pool where you have a fire pit you're going to be outside in the fall this is what you want to do for sure all right we're going to keep on moving abelias look at this this is radiance oh my gosh y'all we've got radiance we've got kaleidoscope we've got some of the proven winners uh somewhere in here um great evergreen and then of course these are the encores on this side look at them this is Starburst right here. Starburst, of course, is that, um, it reminds me of a pale candy cane, honestly. And it is going to be three feet tall, three and a half feet wide, and it is going to be hardy in zones 6A to 10. So they are beautiful along with like the, there's a white one, so forth. We've talked about the gardenias. This is, is it Pillow Talk or Steady As She Goes? I'm not sure which one this is. The steady as she goes. So steady as she goes is going to be a little bit bigger than a pillow talk, but again, they are still blooming. We've had, we haven't had a cool fall yet. I mean, I know fall just officially started, but it has been pretty warm here for us. We have got a few of the white she she camellias left, so we'll see how long they stick around. Full sun. They're going to be petite, uh, but they're going to have beautiful double white flowers on it. Look at this beautiful fall display. The annuals are still rocking out. Yes, there are some that, you know, they're beginning to show a little wear and tear. Eh, it's fine. But overall, that is doing great. The um, hibiscus are doing great. Mums, look at this great display that our ladies uh, did for us. I love it. Now, this is Pillow Talk. So, Pillow Talk Gardenia is going to be smaller. It's not going to be as big in that three to four foot range. And it is going to be cardian zones seven to 10. If you're going to put one in a pot, I would probably do Pillow Talk because it's going to be a little bit smaller on that. The, look, Limelight Hydrangea trees, they have um, buds on them, so they're going to bloom along with the Pugster Amethyst. We hadn't talked about the Amethyst. Still that nice petite butterfly bush, but a nice softer lavender color. Um, and look, combo right here. This would be a magnificent display in your garden. We have got the Panicle Hydrangea that is Quick Fire Fab. Quick Fire Fab is, if it's not the earliest, it's one of the earliest blooming Panicle Hydrangeas. Gorgeous, look at that creamy white, beautiful blooms on it. Nice upright habit. It is hardy in zones three to eight like most panicles full sun to part shade six to eight tall five to six wide we've got grasses we've got cheyenne sky grass and then this color combination of the atlas rose and the pugster amethyst i mean you this is a flower bed right there unto yourself Doom. just got garden there you go um, even got the double play dollies right there so you can mix all of this in together and it would be a spectacular garden for you 
Hello, fall. <laughs> it is here. It is here for sure. All right. My people that have, you know, uh, wedding season, fall wedding season is upon us. If you're doing either like you have a wedding or you're doing a party, this would be a great, these mums that are in beautiful, full, full color reds with the cabbages. Um, we have got a beautiful selection of pansies and violas. Here at the nursery, we keep pansies on one side, violas on the other. Just makes it easier. Pansies, of course, have those big, huge flowers on them, right? So massive flowers. They have fewer flowers per plant than violas. Violas will have a bloom that's at least half this size, but they have more in number. They both have a great show. I mean, obviously, if you're looking to add a little cheer to your garden, come pick up a flat of pansies, containers, hanging baskets, landscape, um, hay racks. It does not matter as long as they get sun, a minimum, I would say, of five to six hours. If you have more shade, they're not gonna flower. Ask me how I know that. I have tried. It doesn't work. So these are definitely going to be full sun. We, of course, have the Ms. America mustard. This is cold hardy for us. It will continue. You will have presence and growth and a beautiful display even in the winter time. It doesn't matter what kind of color palette you're looking for. If you like the yellows or those deep, rich purples or you like bicolors, colors, um, we have got them here. Kind of that beautiful, kind of that rusty orange, red, lots of those colors. Mums, I'm telling you y'all, come get some mums. All you have to do is put water in them. Get a saucer, put it underneath there, and just water them. I water my mums right now that are in full sun about once every three to four days because I do have saucers underneath them. I have them on the side, right there at the front of the sidewalk, and they are just beautiful and cheery. You've got yellows, you've got oranges, you've got purples, you've got reds, we've got whites. Um, you name it, we have it. And then the violas, of course, here are on this side. So you can see how much smaller that bloom is compared to that pansy that I just showed you. But violas typically will have twice the number of flowers per plant than a pansy does. It is definitely time to make your fall containers. That is what I have been doing this week. Oh, it brings me joy for sure. So the cabbages, um, if you are in the South or, and you're watching videos, gardening videos of people who are in cooler climates and you're like, oh my gosh, their cabbage is just such a beautiful, rich white or pink or red, what have you. And then you come here and you're like, but yours is green. Why is your cabbage green? It's because we're still hot, that's why. Um, as soon as the temperatures get consistently cool, that's when you get the color. So this is the color up white. Once we get cool temperatures, all of this center will turn that beautiful white. So it's like anything else in gardening. Plant it now, knowing what it's going to be, maybe not what it looks like right now. That is a beautiful plant. It is gorgeous. It's just not completely white yet. And there's absolutely nothing you can do because you cannot control the temperature in the weather and nor can I. So go ahead and plant it now, knowing that it's going to turn white. Beautiful assortment of still here of the yellow mums, the artemisia. Artemisia for us is technically a perennial. You will have this nice silvery foliage um, all through the winter, spring, and if you wanna keep it, then you can because it is a perennial for us. Nice, rich contrast. Um, you saw me just the other day use the ivy in a hanging basket. So we have Pittsburgh and then we have Proven Winners. This is their Proven um, Accents, the needle point, which is a, a really fine little uh, leaf on that as well. We've got, of course, the kales. Same thing with the kales. You've got reds, you've got whites, and then all of that will color up with the cooler temperatures. Look at that huge mum flower. That sucker is huge for a mum. So depending on what you want as far as like, or you want the most bang for your buck and you want to see them slowly open up, then get ones that are cracking color so you can see exactly what they look like. If you have an event going on and you need full color like right now, we've got those too. Because just like with any other plant out there, 
Mums, you have early bloomers, mid bloomers, and late bloomers. We have some up on the shrub lot, the mum lot right now in production, that I don't even know what color they are because they're super, super tight. So those are gonna be your late mums. Um, so you can have continuous color with your mums throughout the growing season. And yeah, so my people who are familiar with Creekside, we have got, because you have been anticipating this plant, the little redhead, this is an Indian pink, it is a beautiful native plant. It grows predominantly more like in the mountain areas uh, here in the southeast. This is a very, very popular plant in the fact that I have it planted near the bridge going into the pines and people stop and they're like, what is that? I've even had people ask if they could dig it up and buy the plants from the ground. No, you can't because I have this for you. So the little redhead Indian pink is going to be 24 to 28 inches tall with the blooms and zones 5B to 9. I will show you that tag because it's not blooming now. It is an early summer bloomer. Hummingbirds go bananas over this plant because of those bright red and yellow flowers. Very upright. Um, you can see this is where the blooms were, um, but it is, it is a great, great plant. People love it, so we have it available now. Um, let's see, what else should we talk about, Jerry? Oh, I know, I can't forget this. Come on, come on, my sweet people. All right, I forgot to, to swing by that area when we were um, going from one to the next. Land and sea, calling all my people who love land and sea, who were local, come on, let's go talk. Let's go talk for a moment. Now, we, Land and Sea is the only compost that we use. And it is, I am an absolute firm believer in this plant, this plant, listen to me, product, because it is just the highest quality compost we have ever used. It is convenient because it's in a bag. So it makes it very easy to move it around your garden. For the month of October, we are running a special on land and sea, $12.99 a bag. So that is going to be here at the garden center only. My people who are online, I know that you're asking, we've had a lot of people ask, are you gonna ship land and sea? We are trying to find out the most economical way to get land and sea to you. Yes, we will. We're just trying to figure it out because uh, shipping and shipping cost is, you would think it would be pretty simple. It's not my friends and it is not. And so I can't in good conscience sell you land and sea with the shipping costs that are currently associated with that. So this is a REIT in house retail garden center special only land and sea $12.99 a bag. There is no limit. Um, so you, if you want a whole pallet, we'll sell you a whole pallet. There's what 75 bags, 75 bags on a pallet. Now is the time, my preferred time really, to put down compost. You absolutely can do it any time of the year, but this is a great time because typically you're in there cleaning up your flower beds, right? Your perennials are dying back, the leaves are falling, you need to get in there and clean those beds up, get any kind of weeds out, um, the fallen debris, get that all out, come back when it's all cleaned up and lay down your land and see. Whether you're cleaning up those flower beds like I like to do and put it as a top dressing because then all winter, all that good rain or snow, whatever you may have, um, it just gets in there. You'll have beautiful earthworms come next spring and it does a great job. Or maybe you're doing what we tell you to do and you are planting um, lots of shrubs and perennials and trees. Lay this down, use this as your top dressing. You will amend your soil in such a massive way. It makes a huge, huge impact. And I think that's probably one of the biggest things that we have learned is this year is the absolute importance of a healthy soil. When you have really healthy, happy soil, then it's a whole lot less work on you as a gardener because your plants are super happy. So $12.99, a bag of land and sea for the month of October here at the garden center only. Also, I want you to go ahead and start thinking about the spring. And we're gonna go ahead and start running some specials. Plant tone, where land and sea is something that you can do absolutely right now. The spring, so coming out of winter, going into spring, is my favorite time to feed my shrubs and my trees and my perennials. Plant tone is what I use. I go through huge bags of plant tone in late winter because this is what I call the Swiss Army knife of fertilizers. 
So for the month of October with the land and sea, all plant tone is 25% off. Go ahead and come grab multiple big bags of the plant tone, stick it up in your garage somewhere, um, an outbuilding, whatever, that way in late winter. So for calendar wise here where we are, that would mean like end of February. End of February going into March, that is when I go around and I fertilize everything. We have to feed our plants. Yes, we have great soil with that land and sea, but they also need a shot of food coming out of winter going into spring. I compare it to an animal that's hibernated, right? They wake up, they're hungry, they need that food to grow and develop and perform at their best. Plant tone is going to do that for you. So you can use it on your hostas, you can use it on your hydrangeas, you could use it on your, um, I'm sure, any kind of perennial I can think of, um, your spireas, your everything, roses, whatever, you name it. Swiss Army Knife, this will be great for it. So the month of October, all plant tone is 25% off. Come take advantage of that for sure. So I think, did we cover everything? I think we did. Uh, so if you have any questions, rewatch the video, see if I answered them. And if not, throw it in the comments below and then I will do my best uh, to answer it for you. We do greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate all of your love and all of your support um, of Creekside Nursery for those of you folks who come and visit us, those of you that shop online, or and those folks of you that just simply are faithful watchers of our videos. We so greatly appreciate it. As always, y'all have a great day. Thanks for going to Creekside. See you next time. Bye, friends.